Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Well, we're in the book of Daniel. And as I stated in my previous video, when I see something or when the Lord lays something on my heart, I'm going to share it with God's people. Hallelujah. And I am going to proclaim what God has told me to proclaim. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Thank you today for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you today for how you have loved us, God, and you have never left us nor forsaken us. For that, I give you praise. Great God of heaven. Hallelujah. I glorify your name. And Lord, I thank you for your word today. Thank you that you gave us instructions and you left your holy word with us to follow God, to give us hope, to give us direction, Lord, to even allow us to see you in a better light, God. So I thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. So Lord, as you have spoken to me um, from the second chapter of Daniel, Lord, I pray in Jesus name that I would be able to articulate it. God, anoint me in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and let your people hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to all of us. Lord, I pray, oh, Father, lead me through it, God, in the name of Jesus, so that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, Father, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Judah had been carried away into Babylon. And not only was the ordinary, you know, just the everyday people carried away, but the priests and the prophets and all of God's people were carried away into Babylon because some people, some of God's people, I should say in Judah, didn't want to repent. Some of God's people were stiff necked, worshiping other idols and, you know, just not listening to God when he sent the prophets to them to have them repent. So when God got ready to let Babylon come in and besiege them. Everybody, hallelujah, was taken away. It's a word right there for someone. You know, your sin affects other people as well. Your sin affects your children. You know, when God rains down or when, you know, things begin to happen, it gives the devil a way in and it not only affects you, but it affects the next generation as well. That's why God wanted you Judah to turn their hearts back to, to him. Judah would not. So they got carried away to Babylon. And we read yesterday how um, King Nebuchadnezzar, when he got ready to fill his house with, you know, servants and people around him that could assist him. He chose the best in Judah. He chose Daniel and he chose Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which is the Babylonian names that they were given. And so as we read in chapter two, we read about how King Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. And I like King Nebuchadnezzar, his personality, because he said, you know what? I had a dream and all of you fake you know, soothsayers, you magicians, and all of those people who, you know, were from his kingdom that were around him, these supposedly wise men who couldn't discern, you know, what his dream was, he said that they were going to be cut to pieces. So he said um, that, you know, they need to be able to tell him what he dreamed. Now, who can do that? We know as Christians, can't nobody do that but God. The devil can't do that. So all all of these fake people around him were being killed and God raised up Daniel to go before the chief of Nebuchadnezzar's army and this is all found in chapter 2 again of Daniel and he went to him and he said you know what stop killing all of these these um, wise men and stop killing them give me some time you know to go before the true and the living God and he said by faith he told that chief that he would be able to interpret the dream 
And so he besought God, hallelujah. And I want you to know that God answered Daniel and he told him the secret things. See, we serve a God that will tell us. He'll let us know about what's going on, you know, in the background. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you discernment. If you yet seek after him, he'll let you know what's going on. And so once Daniel got the revelation from God, it was given to him in a night vision. The Bible lets us know again in the second chapter of Daniel, and I'm paraphrasing for time. He let you know the, them know, the captain know that, okay, I'm ready now to go before Nebuchadnezzar. Now here's what's awesome. Not only did Daniel have the interpretation of the dream, but Daniel knew what the dream was. He was able to tell him exactly what he saw in his dream. Now, when you go before a king and when you go with such information, because the king did not tell anyone what he had dreamed. When you're able to go before that king recognized that this was from the true and the living God. So there's two things that I saw in this. Even in the midst of great adversity, because Judah was in great adversity, they were in captivity. It was dark time for them. I want you to know that God is still on the move. You know, we look at what our world is facing now. It's a dark time. Hallelujah. In so much as, you know, all of this COVID and all of these things that have come upon the land and all of these restrictions and mandates and all of this stuff that's going through the land. You know what? God still has a word for his people. God still has a man or a woman that can, you know, reveal some things. Give God the opportunity to use you in the midst of adversity. And that's what this book of Daniel is letting us know, that God can use anyone with a willing heart. If you would yet trust him and not bow down to Baal, as we begin to read on in this book of Daniel, we're going to see that they were confronted with, you know, options to bow down before their king in the land. You know, these idols and these statues and all of these mandates and all of this that the king had put before them. But we're going to see some brave men that would not bow and we're going to see how God came through for them. So I want you to know that you can be a testimony in the midst of all of this adversity. You can be one that can show forth the glory of God. Because you know what? When Daniel was able to go forth with the dream and the interpretation, that caused that king to bow down, to even prostrate, you know, himself, to know who was in control. Not Daniel, because Daniel was wise enough to know we don't take God's glory, but he allowed God to use him. Hallelujah. That took faith to go before that king with the dream and the interpretation because had he been wrong, just like the king had mandated, he was going to be chopped to pieces. Hallelujah. It says over um, in Daniel, the second chapter and the fifth verse, this is what it said. It said, the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made an ash heap. He was known as a king of kings. He was a mighty, you know, in his own right. He was a king that God even, you know, said in his word, he was known as a king of kings. And you can see, you can read this in um, the second chapter of Daniel as well. So this was one who, if he said you was going to be cut to pieces, you were going to be cut to pieces. So that just, you know, reaffirms what I'm saying about Daniel. Daniel had the courage to go before him knowing that he had received it from the Lord. So again, God is also calling those who have a word in their mouth. If God has given you something to say, this is the hour, this is the time to say it. Don't be afraid, you know, trust in the Lord. I know that, you know, Daniel got in trouble. We're going to read 
when we go further in the book of Daniel because he prayed and you know all of those were after him all of those Babylonians were after him to destroy him you know the devil comes after you when you begin to speak and when God begins to you know allow you to be seen a little bit then the devil was going to come after you to try to destroy you but I want you to know today that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper I want you to know that if God be for you he's more than the world against you I want you to know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so we have the backing of heaven we have a God that cannot fail we have a God that cannot lie we have a God that is unchallenged we have a God that has created all things and knows all things hallelujah and all things belong to God hallelujah so we are in a good position because we are the sons and daughters of the most high God we are children of God hallelujah and we also have been made to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus hallelujah we are the anointed of God for we are in Christ and because we are in Christ we are anointed we are joint heirs with Christ so we have because of our Lord and Savior Jesus who died for us who made a way because of him we can go and we can stand before God because we're covered by the blood of Jesus when he sees us he sees his blood his son's blood that covers us hallelujah we've been welcomed in we've been grafted into the kingdom so God is our father and he loves us hallelujah and he watches over us and although we might have to go through some things I want you to know that you have not been forgotten I want you to know that there is a God that has numbered even the hairs on your head I want you to know that he is with you today if you would yet step out in faith and say what God has called you to say and so Daniel went before the king and he interpreted the dream this is what I want you to see after Daniel had interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream listen to what the king said Daniel the second chapter and the 46th verse then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face prostrate before Daniel and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal this secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Hallelujah. And then, you know, not only was Daniel promoted. See, Daniel, when he got promoted, he for, he remembered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because it says in verse 49, also Daniel petitioned the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. We must be those that speak what God has revealed. Hallelujah. We must be those that take a stand for God. See, God is looking for those that are not afraid. How have you handled yourself during this pandemic? How have you spoke for the Lord? Have you spoken what God's word says? Or have you spoken what all the news has said? Who have you been a witness for during this time that we have been in this state? Did you bow the knee to Baal or did you stand strong for the Lord? I believe that promotion is coming. Hallelujah. I believe that God was watching. I believe that God was watching his people to see 
how we would handle this great tribulation that we have been in. I pray that we all have been pleasing unto the Lord. For again, promotion is on the way. I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.